Hey everyone, so if you remember the last video, we were talking about the shapes of some specific molecules like boron trifluoride and then we talked a little about the carbon dioxide which had a linear structure where all three atoms were in a single line with 180 degree angle between them. In today's video, we're going to be continuing with some new structures like we're going to start with methane which has the chemical formula of CH4. The central atom is carbon which obviously makes four covalent bonds, 1s2, 2s2, 2px1 and 2py1. Now carbon goes into the excited state and transfers one of its s electron from the 2s orbital into the 2pz orbital. Now not only the s but also the pz has unpaired electron in the orbitals so four unpaired electrons are present. They make four covalent bonds with four hydrogen atoms and now you can see that there are four electron bond pairs around the central carbon atoms there are four bond pairs around the central atom you might think that they are at 90 degree angles but it's actually a 3d shape where they want to be as far as possible imagine a sheet of plane where the carbon atom is in the middle and the four hydrogen atoms are on the four corners of a tetrahedron. The three hydrogen atoms lie below and then the fourth hydrogen atom is at the top. All of these hydrogen atoms have actually 109.5 degree angle between them. These hydrogens are spreaded as far as possible within a 3D structure. This structure is known as a tetrahedral structure where all of these hydrogen atoms are equally apart at 109.5 degree angle. This is the carbon atom. Now you can see how the 3D shape looks like. You can notice that the central atom has four bonds and four hydrogens are each 109.5 degrees apart from each other. It's not on a single plane. All these atoms are not planar at all. Now let's continue and study about ammonia, which has a chemical formula of NH3. Nitrogen with 7 electron has 1s2, 2s2, 2px1, 2py1 and 2pz1, where each p orbital has an unpaired electron. So you can see that there are 3 unpaired electrons where they make single covalent bonds with 3 hydrogen atoms. You can notice that there are 3 bond pairs around the central atom of nitrogen. While there is one lone pair present around the central nitrogen atom. So there are three bond pairs and one lone pair. The lone pair obviously resides in the 2s orbital while the three bond pairs are formed by the three sigma bonds of the nitrogen atom with three hydrogen atoms. The lone pair if you remember causes more repulsion as compared to the simple bond pairs. So the lone pair is going to cause wider repulsion. Imagine nitrogen atom on a plane of paper. The three hydrogen atoms are arranged exactly as in methane but they are closer this time because the lone pair is causing more repulsion and due to the more excessive repulsion caused by the lone pair the hydrogen atoms come a little closer. So they're not 109.5 degree, they're rather 107 degree. And the shape is known as the trigonal pyramidal because it looks like a pyramid with a trigonal base. You can see the nitrogen atom over here with three bond pairs. Each bond pair is actually an electron pair shared with hydrogen atom. You can notice one thing that these three hydrogen atoms are rather more closer compared to the 3D structure of methane. Because the lone pair causes excessive repulsion, that is why the angle is at 107 degrees rather than 109.5 degree. Now let's study the structure of water, where oxygen is going to be the central atom for ourselves. Oxygen with 8 protons has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2px2, 2py1, 2pz1, where there are two unpaired electrons in the 2py and the 2pz orbital. Oxygen atom has two unpaired electrons in these 
two orbitals so it makes two sigma bonds with two hydrogen atoms these hydrogen atoms bring their own electrons and now they're going to be making two sigma bonds around the central oxygen atom that is why you can notice that there are two bond pairs around the central atom but do not forget the two lone pairs ammonia had only one pair around the central nitrogen atom but water has two lone pairs around the central atom of oxygen so overall there are four electron pairs two bond pairs each with a hydrogen atom and two lone pairs again imagine a plane of paper where the oxygen atom is in the middle and the two hydrogen atoms are bonded in a way that they have even lesser angle these two hydrogen atoms are on the same plane as oxygen atom but they have even smaller angle which is 104.5 degrees because there are two lone pairs and these two lone pairs cause more repulsion even as compared to the lone pair in ammonia and that is why the structure becomes bent or you can say v-shaped these three atoms are on the same plane but they are so close because of the excessive repulsion caused by the lone pair the angle is even lesser remember the three atoms are planar they are present on the same plane but this time the excessive repulsion caused by the two lone pairs results in an angle which is even smaller than the angle in ammonia or even smaller than the angle in methane structure this is how the water molecule is formed over here in this 3d structure you can notice the oxygen atom which is the central atom in our case it makes two covalent bonds with two hydrogen atoms let me fix that yeah now you can see that there are two hydrogen atoms overall it looks planar they are on the same plane but what you can't see is the two lone pairs and these two lone pairs cause repulsion where the angle becomes 104.5 degrees even lesser than 107 degrees let's go for another shape which is going to be phosphorus pentachloride here phosphorus is going to be the central atom which belongs to group 5 phosphorus has an atomic number of 15 which means there are going to be 15 electrons so 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3px1 3py1 3pz1 it has a configuration similar to nitrogen based on the huns rule there are three unpaired electrons in the 3p orbitals so there are going to be three bonds at least but you can notice one thing that phosphorus uses the electron pair from the 3s orbital and transfers it to the 3d orbital that is why it can make five covalent bonds and now it can share five electrons with five chlorine atoms how it does it is not our concern right now but we notice one thing that there are five bond pairs around the central atom of phosphorus you might think that they're on the same plane but again that is not true again it is a 3d structure and these five electron pairs or you can say the bond pairs arrange themselves in a 3d way phosphorus atom lies on a plane where three of the chlorine atoms are at 120 degree they are in a triangular structure while the remaining two chlorine atoms are above and below that plane so the three chlorine atoms out of the five are on three corners of a triangle at 120 degree angle while two of the chlorine atoms are lying exactly in the same plane but above and below so one of the chlorine atom is at 90 degree above the other is 90 degree below this structure has two angles 120 degree angle between the three chlorine atoms and 90 degree angle between the three chlorine atoms and the other two which are above and below overall this structure is known as a trigonal bipyramidal 
because it provides a base of a triangle and it can make a pyramid above and below. You can notice one thing that three chlorine atoms are on the same plane, but there is one chlorine atom above and one below. Five bond pairs present around the central atom of the phosphorus. Over here, you can see that three chlorine atoms are on the same plane while the other two are at 90 degree angle. It's really important for us to know how these shapes are made and what they represent because often their properties are determined by their angle. The last shape that we're going to be discussing in today's video is sulfur hexafluoride. You can imagine the chemical formula which is SF6. Sulfur is going to be the central atom which belongs to period 3. It's got a configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3px2, 3py1 and 3pz1. Technically, it has only two unpaired electrons in 3py orbital and 3pz orbital. But it unpairs the electrons in 3s and 3px orbital and sends them into its 3d orbital. The 3d orbital did not even exist before, but now it's sending its electron from 3s and 3px. This unpairing results in the capacity of sulfur to make six covalent bonds. Sulfur is now using its 3d orbital where it's going to be able to make six covalent bonds. It's none of our concern right now how it does it. We study that in A2. But now we notice that sulfur has a capacity of making six covalent bonds. Now in our case with six fluorine atoms. These six fluorine atoms are around the central atom of the sulfur and you can notice that there are six bond pairs. These six bond pairs are arranged in a 3D structure where sulfur lies on a plane and the four fluorine atoms out of these six are on the four corners of a square. The other two fluorine atoms are above and below. So you can notice that there is only 90 degree angle between each fluorine atom. Four fluorine atoms are on the corners of a square while two of the remaining fluorine atoms are above and below this plane. Four fluorine atoms are planar with the sulfur atom each with 90 degree angle while the other two also have 90 degree angle above and below represented here by the blue pen. So it's one plane with above and below two fluorine atoms. This kind of structure is known as the octahedral structure. I hope this idea is clear to you guys. In the next video, we're going to be talking about hybridization. So stay tuned. Thanks.